let's uh, get on with the show. It can only get better. Out of the west, they're riding our way, these boats. Johnny, Chris, Willie and Waylon. And together they make up the highway. survived 12 marriages, more than 115 years on the empty highways in the crowded honky tonks of America. If you believe the legends, just about anything and everything you could drink or smoke or pop, they've drunk and smoked and popped. Self-confessed outlaws, this quartet are on Australia's most wanted list of music fans right now. Woody Nelson, Wayland Jennings, Chris Christopherson, the Mayor and Johnny Cash. Each on his own. Dawson, the man himself. He's got his own as a superstar, as we know. Throw them together, and it's country music's ultimate for them. And we caught up with folks, the highwaymen, last weekend on the road in America summer. Would you please welcome the boys who call themselves the highwaymen. Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Um, so you're about to go on stage. Johnny Cash, you've been on our program here before, on the last visit. Where are you now, and why are you? We're at uh, Norman, Oklahoma, at the University of Oklahoma City. And we're here for a concert tonight for uh, the show that, uh, that Willie uh, brought together to Asia's uh, Farmers. The benefit of the farmers also uh, benefiting from tonight's show will be an organization called Feed the Children. But the date is for um, an organ. Willie will tell you more about it, the organization for the Help American Farmers that is kind of down and out from now. Well, Willie, you've been doing this for a few years now. The, uh, we know that we've when you first started the Midwest, but uh, you can almost do that in Australia. We've got the same problems here. You know, this, tonight is a unique uh, program because uh, the idea that we're trying to uh, get popular among the voters here in the country and the legislators is an idea called parity giving, where someone who has the funds and the means to do so can help feed the hungry and also can help feed the, uh, help the farmers uh, sell their product all at the same time. Chris Christopherson, it's an interesting development of music, isn't it? We've seen the Band Aid concerts uh, uh, with the popular music, the idea of musicians now getting involved in these calls and raising lots of money. Well, I think uh, uh, people are becoming aware that people have to get involved, citizens have to get involved in a democracy. I don't think we can, uh, we can sit back and rely on our politicians, you know, our government to take care of problems that they're not taking care of. All right, let's talk music for a moment. Then you referred to that the first time of an album a few years ago, it went gold here in Australia. This is the first time you've toured together. Um, why did you decide to get back on the road again? Can we ask you, Wayland? Oh. <laughs> we, uh, I'm out just sitting here enjoying what we're there. I think we have a good time with this. You know, one of the things about it, you know, we could go on with our own individual shows forever. Okay. The great thing about this, it helps my individual show when I do this. So you get to get up here and you get to kind of stretch out, you know, I'd say. So a lot of times you have to do the same songs every night. And uh, I'm talking 20 years worth. And when you get us get up here, and I have to learn 20 new songs. <laughs> That wasn't easy for a guy with brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I learned them. And you know what? I have fun. You have fun working together. You know, but, um, and, uh, these guys need it. This is a song I wrote about myself. But look at this some of y'all. I might have wrote it about you, too. And now, now, whether they like it or not, they got me for two flat hours. <laughs> Hey, well, now, Willie, can we ask you, yeah. you've heard of this uh, recorded with Wayne and before very successfully, but uh, this is a fairly unusual barbershop quartet, quartet, isn't it? I mean, why did you decide to go along with this? Well, it really all started uh, with uh, when John was doing a Christmas show in uh, Switzerland, and uh, we just all happened to be there, uh, and then we decided it wasn't a good idea, maybe for a couple of us did an album together. I think it started out to be mine and John's album, I believe. And then uh, since Chris and Waylon were there, well, we thought it would be good at say something on it. So that's really how the first album album began. You talk about uh, the life I love is making music with my friends. 
uh, on on the road again. But uh, what in 1991? What do you love most about it now? Same thing. Uh, for probably uh, different reasons. Every time I go out, I'm always glad I'm here. <laughs> Chris, there was a newspaper article, you kind of always trust the newspapers, but you're quoted as saying about the highwaymen, I can remember not too long ago when just one of us was too many to handle in the studio. How are they handling four of you now on the road? It's amazingly uh, uh, coordinated. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that uh, there's four people who are, who are so determined to go off in their own direction to get, you know, behind uh, four microphones on the same stage. But we do it for a couple of hours or more, and uh, and there's something about the energy of that that it really feels to me. I have a applause just, just being on the stage while all these songs that I've listened to forever you know, are being uh, played, and I get to sing a harmony for them, whether they like it or not. <laughs> It seems that, I mean, is it a fair comment to say that you are travelling with men who were who were your idols not so many years ago, and these days you're up there on stage, not just as, not just travelling, but just singing with them? Absolutely. That's, uh, I think of that just about every night when I look around at me. I can remember when I was the janitor in the recording studio where I was pitching songs to, to John. And, this is in Nashville? Uh, yeah, and uh, Waylon was about the only one I'd met, and... And I met, I, I got to know uh, Willie Steele Crawford, Jimmy Day, and uh, they were all heroes. And, and uh, Waylon Drummer was the closest I got to him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you were as close as he got to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris, when you were in that room, when you were there actually sweeping that room, did you have any idea, uh, I'll be honest, did you have any idea when you wrote me and Bobby McKee that that was going to be a breakthrough sound, a breakthrough song for what's called country music? I felt like it was a good song. I still probably feel like if you had to name it down for one song, that would be, that would, I would say that was the best one uh, that I wrote. And uh, it, was, it was a breakthrough for me. I don't know if it was a breakthrough for country music. Or not. But it, it took me into a lot of bars. Willie, you said you're quoted as saying that you uh, you wish that you'd written me and Bobby McGee. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> or at least I wish I had written something like it. <laughs> Next year. Next year. Now he's just living it. <laughs> when you headed down to Chris, go on, Chris said uh, he wrote a song one time that said, let's all get together and steal each other's song. So uh, that's what we did. It's legal. They do pretty well, too. Uh, the Highwoman album has gone gold in Australia, so obviously it's going to be a huge concert when they come down. Um, Chris Christopherson would get no argument from me, <coughs> excuse me, when he says that uh, me and Bobby McGee was the best song that he ever wrote. It's become one of those uh, all-time country classics. We're going to feature their music today. To do it just